Before we get started, let's go over some definitions. First of all, what is the International Phonetic Alphabet? It is a set of symbols that were originally developed by linguists to describe the sounds of spoken languages. Today, all over the world, voice teachers and choir directors use IPA for consistency in their lessons and their rehearsals. It makes it easy when everybody is in agreement about what a symbol represents in sound. Next, a phoneme. What is a phoneme? It's simply an individual sound or a group of different sounds that are perceived to be a single sound. Orthographic is the ABC spelling of a word. The word cat is spelled C-A-T. That's an orthographic spelling, but its phonemes would be k a -t and would not look like C-A-T. An allophone is a distinct variant of a phoneme. Think about the United States of America. The way we sing in Texas is not the same way as people who sing in Chicago or California or Oregon or New York or Maine. And even in European countries, there are distinctions between regions in Italy, there's a Northern Italian pronunciation, a Mid-Roman pronunciation, and a Southern Italian. You've heard the word diphthong in your choirs, but did you know there was also a monophthong, a sound that is a single sound throughout its entire position? E, O, E. My lips and my tongue stayed exactly in the same place. When I go to the diphthong, I start with one vowel shape and position, and then I morph into another one right at the end of the word. The word I, my, by, boat, moat, goat, are examples of English words that are diphthongs. And we want to stay on that primary vowel and then right at the end go to the secondary vowel so that the listener knows exactly what the word is. If we don't go to the secondary vowel, I becomes a ah, and by becomes ba. And so if we're singing ba ba black sheep versus by by by, we can hear that we have a monothong and a diphthong. Lastly, the triphthong are three symbols joined together. Fire is an example of a triphthong. Let's continue our studies in diction by looking today at some Italian. First of all, let's review. What is a phoneme? Is it an alphabetical letter? No. Is it a variant of a sound? No. Is it a single sound? Yes. Please remember that as we continue on today. Here's our IPA chart that's interactive, ipachart.com. This is a great place for you to practice your vowels. Let's look at the forward vowels in Italian. E. 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 A. A. Notice that we did not practice I or A. 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 E. 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 O. 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 Now, Italian is a forward open language. So as we're practicing our O vowels, we're going to want to have make sure that we're open and forward. Last time we looked at five positions of front to back that match the quadrilateral quadrilateral triangle that uh, quadrilateral that we just looked at. 
one, two, three, four, five. So one forward, two right at the, right behind the alveolar ridge, which is if you take your tongue and move from your teeth, you'll feel that ridge before the hard palate. Three right here on the hard palate, four, and then those five back valve, the position five back in the in the back. In, in Italian, we want to make sure that we're nice and forward. Let's look at the phonemes of Italian. Remember that we have a bracket and we put our phoneme transcript symbol inside the bracket, making it uh, uh, different. It's a symbol, not a letter. E, 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 our epsilon, A, our A vowel, U, U forward, O, and O. O, even our O vowel in Italian is more open than it is in English. Then the semiglides, Y and W, yes, wet in English, similar. M, N, N. This is a left tail N. It does not match in English. I use the example lasagna, L-A-S-A-G-N-A lasagna and this is a left tail in versus the ng which we do have in english like sing so ung ung and we're going to find that in italian in some specific places that are important that we learn l the turned y voglio voglio and we'll see how that's spelled it's not spelled with a y we'll see how that's spelled R with a trill and a fish hook R with a tap, Mary, where we just tap or flip our R. P, B. Now remember, in Italian, we it is a dental language. That's important for you to learn right from the beginning, that it's a dental language. If we aspirate our consonants, then we are doing our consonants like in English. We want to be careful that we don't do that in Italian. So not pillow, but pillow, pillow, if we were, if that word were in Italian. B, D, D, G, G, F, V. Z. Then our esh and tits up. T -z adds on church and then judge. J. Let's look at some very, very important rules when it comes to singing in Italian. Italian is the favored language of great singers because we love to sing with this beautiful open vowel sound. It's lyrical and it lives from vowel to vowel. And we learn vocal habits that can help us in all of our singing. English emphasizes consonants and Italian emphasizes vowels. So it's important that we see this right here. So our Emotion in English is delivered through strong consonants, but in Italian, our emotion is delivered through resonant, big, beautiful vowels. Most English syllables end in consonants, and so we give a punch on the, often a button on the end of our words. But in Italian, we end with a vowel sound. And when one vowel, when a word ends in a vowel, and is followed by a word that begins with a vowel, we have a connection between them, a legato connection. So Italian speech connect is never is often is usually not broken by pauses. Whereas in English speech, we break often for emphasis. We stop our tone so that we can emphasize the coming word or so that we keep two vowels from running together. We would never say the apple is falling from the tree. We say the apple fell from the tree. But Italians speak with a continuous legato. In English, we change color of our vowels often. 
think about the word S-T-E-E-L or S-T-E-A-L. I'm going to steal a base. You hear that when the runner steals a base, we have a change of the vowel color. The L of steal changed the vowel. But in Italian, stile, S-T-I-L-E, stil, stil, the L does not change the vowel. It stays a monophthong and it doesn't, it's not colored by the consonant. Low, lay, especially in Texas, we have to be super careful. I just overdid my Texan. Low, lay, we have to be super careful. Lo, le, le. For me, le, I have, is the hardest. I have to be careful that I keep my tongue and stop my air. Le, le, before I have a chance to come up to the E of the diphthong. Le, I came up, my, I moved positions. So I um, talked earlier, a second ago, about the L of steel, that the consonant changed the color of the vowel. Steer. If we say a male cow is a steer, we almost make that a two-syllable word. Steer, steer in Italian, steer in English, because the R changed the color of the vowel. So we have to practice really, really, really diligently about those particular things. <clears throat> Some consonants are pronounced toward the back of the mouth in English. R, R, but toward the front of the mouth in Italian, R, R. So be sure that your Italian consonants are forward and not back. When a consonant's back, the vowel's back. R, are you going? R, are you going? Much more forward and keep that R forward. And lastly, and um, very important, Italian consonants are dental, they're weak. The exception to that is the double consonant, diletto. The first consonant, the first T of petto or diletto stops the tone. The second brings it back again. This symbol, the double dot in between, tells us that we hold the consonant position. Letto, petto. But we don't go petto, and that had air. It makes sure it's dental. Petto. There are diphthongs in Italian. Io, mio, suo, tuo. But both of them are pronounced, unlike in English, boat. The word boat is a diphthong. So you can divide the diphthong in Italian evenly. If it's a quick note, if it's a long note, you sing on the first vowel for a majority of the duration of the note, and then you drop in the second. This is especially important for the possessive pronouns. Mio, tuo, suo. Often we want to go mio, tuo, suo, and we have to be sure that we don't do that. Um, I almost think of them as a, as a shadow vowel. Mio, tuo. So, and if you listen to the great Italians singing, you sometimes hardly hear that second vowel of the diphthong. Often we want to go mio, tuo, suo, and we have to be sure that we don't do that. Um, I almost think of them as a as a shadow vowel. Mi, tu, su, and if you listen to the great Italians singing you sometimes hardly hear that second vowel of the diphthong. Here's a key to the International Phonetic Alphabet for Italian, and here's some samples. Cara. When we sing caro mio ben, often we will hear singers sing caro back in the back as in, as in English. That a vowel as in father is not present in Italian. So be sure that you think mamma. A good way to check your vowel is to go like a baby. Mamma, mamma, like a baby doll. Cara, andante. We say andante. Ah, oh, 
But in Italian, andante, andante. And then our forward, che. Legato, not legato. We say legato. We say legato. But that's when we're just talking and not really being cognizant of our Italian. Legato. And not legato, but legato. Ecco. Presto. Presto. Not presto, but presto. This nice big epsilon right here. Mio. Divino. I like to have a bright eval where my cheeks come up toward my eyes. Divino. Then the covered solo, the closed. Solo. Così. Così. Not solo, because that's too covered. Solo versus opera. Opera and forte. So these are open, but this big open A is very open. Forte. And then Bruno, tuba, with a beautiful uvel. So don't swallow your U in the back. Your semi vowels look like J and W, but they actually are functioning as a glide. Piu, piano. We say piano, but if we're going to pronounce it correctly, if you'll look right here, piano. Piano. And then uomo, acqua, acqua. And we think of Y and W as consonants, but they actually are more of a vowel. They're a semi-vowel sound. And here are consonants. And we've talked about the flipped R. Furore and cara. If you roll the R, you're going to make the syllable stressed. So you need to make sure that when you have an unstressed syllable that has an R in it, that it's only flipped. And then when we roll that R or trill that R, ritardo, it makes it stressed. Cor. So be very careful that you notice how the R, how the symbol is drawn, and that if it's the fish hook, you tap, and that if it's the R that looks like a printed R, that you'll trill it or roll it. Here are our gliding consonants, which we do not have in English, but we have words that we use, that we borrow from Italian, that, that help us make that connection. So here's our G-L-I orthographic spelling, and then we have our Y that's upside down. And that is pronounced like Lio, Lio. So Giglio, Giglio. And then we have the G in, that's the left tail in that we talked about earlier. Lasagna or Ogni, Segno. In musical terms, we have Dal Segno, the sign. If we go back to the sign, the little S with the two dots, that's the segno. So we don't pronounce that segno, we pronounce that segno. So taglia, segno, scoglio, and not scolio, scoglio, scoglio. H's are always silent. Ano, onesta. An H after a C or a G, or an SC will harden it. So this is pronounced, C-H-I is going to be pronounced key. This is meschino. I is silent when it's used to soften C, G, or SC, as in ja or lasha. So this is not lashia, but lasha. And that's, you're going to see your S used right here. Lasha, with a double S. Lasha, and ja, ja. Be careful that you don't pronounce Giovanni as Giovanni. But that I has softened the G from G to J. So its function is just like H. It's now there for a purpose. It's not to be pronounced. So begin to think when you see G-I-O-V-A-N-N-I, -N -N -I, start practicing that as 
Giovanni instead of Giovanni. Giovanni. Before we go on, I'd like for you to remember that Italians are very energetic in their speaking. And we find that it's fun for us to use our Pavarotti hand and that we, when we sing, we use our hand. When you watch Italians, they use their hands to speak with. We find that that gives us elongation when we need it. And our Spanish speakers, our native Spanish speakers, will discuss that it's sometimes difficult for them to get their Italian right. So what they do is I ask them, what helps you differentiate between Spanish and Italian? And they say that when they think a taller vowel, they sound more Italian. And when they don't remember to sing with that tall vowel, they sound more Spanish. So they will use their hands to help them with that too. If you're a native Spanish speaker or if you speak Spanish fluently, that's something that you can remember. It's so similar the two languages, that sometimes we have to really work extra hard. The other thing is to be careful about thrusting with the tongue, that T's need to stay behind the teeth. Diletto versus diletto. Don't let the T thrust. Now let's go on to the open and closed E and O. The letter E and the letter O are important to differentiate when you are working on your Italian diction. First of all, you know, just like anywhere else, different areas, different regions of the country pronounce them differently. The diligent student singer will look at the regional background of the song that he is singing and listen to native speakers from those areas and match as closely as possible the diction for, for that region. So you want to be super careful. The difference between E and E is phonemic and we have the E vowel, E, and we have the E vowel. If you use them interchangeably, you change the definition of the word. My favorite example is a Starbucks example, and that you know that when you go to Starbucks, you can order a venti. You need to be careful. Is it a venti or a venti? Those are two different words. So we will look in our IPA source, and we will make sure that we practice our E's and our O's. I never begin teaching or performing a piece of music in Italian before I have really, really diligently learned my E and my O. Is it covered? O. Is it closed? O. Or is it open? O. The O is still, even the closed O is still open. O. But it's not as open as O. O. Opera. It's very open. It's not A, it, but it's not O. Credo. Credo. I have to be careful. Is it credo, I believe, like a creed, or is it credo, which is the creed? So, verb, noun. Sometimes it's verb, noun. Sometimes it's two completely different words. So, you have to be really, really diligent about that. Here we have mesto from mestare to stir. Here we have mesto, sad. A funny tidbit, Mozart often would put jokes in his Italian libretto to make sure that the singers were being careful, because if they were not careful, they would sing something that was not what the character was supposed to sing. So be very, very careful. Here we have legge, la legge, versus legge. So the law, le, la legge, legge reads. Those are need to be very, very careful. So those are some examples of A. Here's the Starbucks example right here at the bottom. Venti, 20. Venti, 
the wins. So if you go into Starbucks and you order a venti, you have ordered wind versus venti, which is 20 ounces. Let's take a little quiz. This is a matching monophthong. Is it an alphabetical spelling? Is it a variant of a phoneme? Is it a phoneme with no variance of position? Or is it two sounds joined together to create a phoneme? Mono, single. So let's try a phoneme with no variance of position. Allophone, let's see. Uh-oh, we didn't do this right. Okay, let's try this again. A phone, there we go. A phoneme with no variance of position. All right, let's go over here. Alphabetical spelling. Is it an allophone? Is it an orthographic? Or is it a diphthong? Let's try orthographic. Yes. Diphthong, die, to, to. And finally, allophone, a variant of a phoneme. We made a 100. Here's our alphabetical key, a nice chart. When we see C-I-E, we pronounce it che. When we see C-Q-U, we pronounce it qua. When we see F-F, we know that's a double F. F, F, F and lots of time spent on it. Here we have our G-L-I. Li. Here we have our G N N, our left tail. And if it's in the middle, we have a double. Let's see if we have some other examples. Qua, qua. In French, this is qui. In Italian, it's qui. Double L. Let's look at that. In Spanish, pronounced one way in Italian, those L's are pronounced L. So not a uh, YA, but L, a double L. I hope this introduction to Italian diction will give you a jump start on preparation for your solos and for your choral work in the future. I'll see you again soon.